that. So uh, peace and peace be done to you. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And I hope you're all having a good evening. Uh, it's uh, sometimes difficult uh, to stand here as, as, as I'm aware that I am uh, I'm the barrier between you and me. And that's a little bit difficult. But on the positive side, uh, uh, there is light at the end of the tunnel. Uh, so hopefully, as I conclude, uh, you will be rewarded uh, for your patience. Uh, I'd like to thank the UK uh, Islamic Mission and the Peace Centre for, for inviting me and indeed for organising this uh, conference. And also I'd like to uh, uh, thank all the speakers who have spoken before me. There's been so much positive and great messages that have come out and I've learnt a lot. Um, one thing obviously most important when we're talking about cohesion and, and, and the like is, is the use of language. And uh, if our brothers who organize this conference allow me that uh, to differ with the word tolerance, because I think the word tolerance, uh, although it can definitely be used in a positive way, it probably describes what uh, Joan spoke about late earlier, about that uh, tolerance is more about being forced to accept others. It's almost like uh, they are forced upon us and so we have to uh, tolerate them. And indeed there have been so many messages about the importance of respect and having that uh, genuine feeling that we want to build uh, bridges and to do good to others. So tolerance can be a veneer or a, or a facade whereas respect should be emanating uh, from from the heart. And while I'm talking about language and diversity of language and also diversity of race, this is something actually that that uh, Allah God mentions and reminds us in the Quran that indeed one of His signs is the creation of the heavens and the earth and the differences or the diversity of your tongues and the diversity of your skins. And that's something that allows us to understand from a religious perspective that actually language uh, and the whole diversity that different cultures, different uh, religions, people of faith, people of no faith, they all bring in to the human experience that we have. Uh, one of the verses that many people quote when we talk about multiculturalism is the verse where God says, indeed, he has created you from a male and a female and has made you into tribes and nations in order that you know one another. And the word uh, used here, ita'arafu, is very much uh, translated as knowing one another. But another aspect of this word is not just about knowing each other, but it is about doing good to each other. Because that's another word, the meaning of, of ma'ruf. So today, whilst... Uh, Culturalism and multiculturalism has no longer something that people just relate to each other through diplomatic um, dialogue, but it's become a reality as people migrate to different parts of the world trying to uh, learn and to uh, experience and to make a gain from the different uh, experiences that they have. And we should be proud here in the UK that many cultures, many people from the other world uh, find the UK as a, a focus where they would like to come. We know that many people cross across Europe and despite all the countries in Europe, they choose to come uh, to the UK. And I think that's something to be, uh, to be proud of and to be, uh, to be delighted and to celebrate. Much like people in the olden times, um, they used to go to countries which were hubs of civilization. We know the um, in the Islamic uh, Andalusia, where people from out throughout the world were coming to Cordoba, for example, because it was a center of civilization. And not because the Muslims were there, but it was Muslims, Christians, Jews, they were all participating in making uh, this diversity uh, uh, and giving back. Um, Kevin mentioned that one of the ways to dispel myths is about discovering and knowing each other. And I think that's also very important uh, when we understand uh, about you know, each other and learn each other. I really believe that 
there is a lot of goodwill uh, in the UK today. There's a lot of goodwill from uh, from people, but unfortunately, uh, and uh, I know I sometimes we generalise a lot when we speak about the media, but it seems like the media doesn't have goodwill. A lot of the the goodwill that's out there, a lot of the the, the, the love, a lot of the uh, the respect is usually masked by the media trying just to promote bad stories, negative stories, stories about people who are doing uh, evil things. And that's because those kind of stories sell uh, more. But I think we have to uh, be ready to actually dig deeper and to you know, go further than just scratching the surface and really looking at what uh, communities can, can do. We saw in Finsbury Park, when um, uh, when uh, a terrorist drove his van into the Muslims coming out from prayer and indeed killed one person and, and injured many, we saw that the massive response from people from all different uh, uh, backgrounds who came and showed their solidarity uh, with the Muslims following this this attack, and that shows. And this is just one example. There are so many examples, and time is short uh, to mention. Uh, them all. I want to just say that uh, from a religious perspective, um, religion uh, has a lot to offer. And I think we've already heard of great work that's been done under uh, the banners of religion. And that's because uh, religion can guide people to, you know, through that kind of understanding to do the, the, the good things. Uh, today, there's many, much research about how religion can help people in terms of their um, uh, their health, their healing, uh, how religion can play a part in terms of contributing to basic activities, and, and obviously community cohesion uh, is one of one way in doing that. I'm just going to share very quickly, I know time is short and, and, and I'm sure you're all hungry as I am, uh, that just a few ideas about how do we achieve or how do we increase uh, cohesion? I think one of the most important things is that we have to have the, we have to appreciate the value of cohesion. We have to appreciate it, and we have to be able to recognize it. When we, when people uh, interact with each other, there's so much to learn from each other. There's lots of things that we can learn from different societies. Uh, we heard, for example, about the Canadian model uh, with the refugees. Um, and, and simple other example, I was, I was once reading about how, for example, in Japan, uh, the people who come to, uh, when they come to work, um, they park, they, the way they park their cars is the one who arrives the first, parks the furthest away, for example. And then, so as people come, the one who arrives late to work, you'll find a spot closer to the entrance. And it's, 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 it's the maybe a small thing, but it just shows you that sometimes people thinking in different ways. We wouldn't have learned that if we didn't actually uh, you know, interact with different cultures. And so every culture, every community, every religion, every race, they have something to offer. And that's the kind of multiculturalism benefit that comes uh, by, by, you know, by, um, by learning from each other and obviously uh, managing to, um, to uh, build on that. Secondly, uh, we have to have the firm conviction that cohesion uh, is uh, achievable uh, and, and there must be a vision that we strive uh, to do this. Kyla spoke about having, you know, even having small steps, working on small steps, but at least there's a vision to get somewhere. And even if every one of us does those small steps, and I'm sure together we can achieve a lot. Because even in the word community, there is, there is a, a sign there because community is about com unity, coming together and working uh, uh, together. Also, there is an importance about working with differences and not trying to erase them. Today, you know, there are some, there is a section in society which tries to move that you know, everybody has to conform to the same ideals, to the same uh, understandings, but, and this is not what, um, you know, uh, how people are. You know, people don't like to be forced to be thinking in a, in a certain way. I don't think that any democratic uh, liberal society will accept that they have to force their ideals on people today. We saw a couple of years ago how in France, um, women were forced at gunpoint 
to take off their clothes. You know, they weren't happy to wear this burkini uh, that Muslim women were wearing to, to, to go onto the beach. They were forced to take off their clothes because they didn't conform to how you should dress at the beach and, and so on. So things like that are not helpful for Kahina. We have to appreciate and we have to accept each other. And uh, recently we had, the, there was a bit of a debate about the whole world of Islamophobia. And people were, when the word Islamophobia comes up, people feel um, a little, those who don't like the word, think that it closes down debate and discourse about people who want to criticize Islam, or criticize Muslims, or criticize the Quran. And in fact, when you actually open the Quran, you find that the Quran itself, uh, it recalls the criticism against it. So the Quran doesn't close down discourse and dialogue and actually invites you to make your point, you know, bring forward. But I think what is different today and, and uh, I think what's important for us, and this is something maybe there is, whereas there is a difference between the, I would say from the Muslim outlook, I can't speak on behalf of others, is this whole concept of the right, uh, the rights. And I think today, yes, a lot of people try to push the right to offend. You know, I have the right to offend you and therefore, I must offend you, and you must accept my right to offend you. And I think whilst, okay, that might be an acceptable notion, but it goes against the whole premise of what we know today is hate speech and people who actually advocate for, uh, uh, for hatred. And, and therefore there must be a subtle acceptance. And that's why, uh, finally, I, I think what we have to do is we have to start early uh, you know, our children have to be nurtured and have to be brought, brought up on understanding the values of each other and the needs to be done there. Our religious institutions have a big role to play as well. And we need to challenge. We need to challenge the media when it to just promotes this kind of hate uh, messages. We need to challenge uh, politicians when they also uh, make uh, um, ill thought out comments which again can ostracize people and communities and we have to promote the whole concept of working together, this niceness and sincerity, the community that we talk about and we have to remember that it's um, as the words of uh, Edmund Burke that the only thing necessary for the triumph of evil is that good people do nothing. So if we don't do anything then yes things are not going to get better. But I'm really happy today that you all come today. I thank you for listening. Thank you for being part of this conference and I wish you all the best for the future. Take care.